Hi, this is Lee. I'm looking at Twitter as an educational tool. Um, in this assignment, I'm going to review how Twitter has been used in the classroom and um, uncover some of the potential that Twitter has to enable the conditions for the learning. To start any discussion, we must always, why would you use Twitter as an educational tool? Bolstead and Gilbert et al. unpacked the six themes of future-oriented teaching and learning in their 2012 paper, The Themes of Future-Oriented Teaching and Learning. They include three themes which are relevant to using Twitter. The first is desiloing of schools, new relationships with the community, national and global. The second is new roles for teachers and learners, that is the teacher not necessarily leading the learning. And the third theme is personalised learning. Twitter allows learners to do all of these things, as well as developing and utilising the six C skills wanted by employers for future work. That is, using connectivity, communication, critical thinking, creativity, celebrating culture and collaboration. To dig deeper into these skills, Michael Fullan's work around new pedagogies for deep learning has also identified six Cs, which are the essential skill set that every student needs to achieve and excel in deep learning. His deep learning definition is comprehensive learning that includes a range of skills and attributes related to human flourishing. They are collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, citizenship, character development and communication. This diagram is from Fullan and Langworthy's book, A Rich Seam, How New Pedagogies Find Deep Learning, on page 31. Twitter allows teachers and learners to collaborate with peers on learning, access class and online materials, work with others and from outside class. This shows learning with a higher use of technology which enables knowledge creation rather than information consumption. Twitter affords all of the elements that mobilise deep learning. The establishment of learning partnerships, designing, monitoring and assessing learning, access to 24-7 learning environments and leveraging the digital technology. This slide shows the factors which Fullen says help teachers reflect on their choice of activities for deep learning to be able to take place. Fullen works with teachers to assess each one of these factors which allow deep learning using progressions for each of these skill sets and an example is shown in this slide. It is clear from this work that Twitter affords the conditions necessary for deep learning to take place. So now we've covered the why, let's have a look at what is Twitter. We'll start with the history. Jack Dorsey and Noah Glass founded Twitter in 2006. It was going to be a way of messaging to players of the game Odeo um, in place of SMS, which was costing players a lot. After the two developed the platform, Dorsey and others bought the rights to it when the game Odeo was going through a rough patch. Jack Dorsey was the one who sent the first tweet on March the 21st, 2006, making it ten and a half years old now. A tweet is restricted to 140 characters because that was the limit of SMS messages when the platform was started. It has had exponential growth as a platform since then, as this image shows, up to 2011. It is estimated that there are 313 million active monthly users now in 2016. So the use has plateaued possibly with many more people having an account, but not actively sharing. As early as 2008, Twitter had 1 million users and it was soon been investigated for educational use. It was seen as a microblogging platform and allowed real-time interaction between its users, so it was very useful for communication. For example, asking questions, seeking clarification, providing feedback from tutors, support and advice and interactions between students. It has been reported as being very useful for tertiary learners, with the research showing greater engagement, aided relationship building, and creating meaning through sustained communication. In a higher education study, it was found that Twitter required users to learn a range of digital literacy skills to successfully use the tool. 
Because of the continuing advance of new technologies for communicating, she suggests that teachers and learners alike need to keep nimble to be able to fully utilise these tools. Twitter literacies that need to be understood can be found on this resource. This resource explains a lot of the literacies that you'll need to use Twitter. So let's explain a few of the terms. Twitter handle. Your handle identifies who you are and should reflect your public persona. Tips for a suitable handle can be found in the link in the notes for this slide. On Twitter you want people to respond to you so and not be put off by a risque or otherwise questionable surname. And if you run into your Twitter pals at networking events or other real life social situations, you want to make sure that you don't mind having your username written on your name tag or shouted out in greeting. The hashtag. The hashtag allows you to tag your content, group your ideas and resources together, allows learners to curate content and search for content as well as building professional learning networks. Research in a higher education showed that in a biology class where Twitter was formally introduced, the undergraduates used social media more than graduates and faculty. The researchers found that undergraduates identified positive aspects of Twitter more than faculty. The authors suggested that Twitter could be used to augment content suggesting Twitter as a hub, and it is feasible using hashtags to gather content. Hashtags, according to Alan November in this article on Twitter, are a beautiful thing in which he promotes Twitter as a powerful educational tool. It is a beautiful thing because it allows you to search for your topic of interest as well as create a hashtag that you and others can use around a particular topic. Hashtags should not be overused. Two hashtags increase engagement, but more than two decreases engagement. In this slide, there is a link to a number of popular educational hashtags from Alan November. We'll open it up briefly. You can have a look. There are a heap in different subject areas and so on. You will be able to have a look at the many hashtags that there are. You can use a hashtag to build a community of people interested in the same thing. You can also sort your contacts into lists of people interested in the same thing. A tweet does not just have 140 characters. You can tweet multimedia like video, web links and images. In fact, not surprisingly, if you use multimedia, you can get more engagement. Now that we've explored the why and the what, we can have a look, closer look at the how. So how have people been using Twitter in class? In the biology class study mentioned before in slide 14, there seemed to be a barrier for faculty using Twitter as they felt there was too much derailment of the learning intentions, too much content causing loss of focus, for example. This is possibly quite true if you have a linear or methodical approach to learning, with certain predefined outcomes required to be assessed. However, in the case of self-directed learning, it would probably be ideal as the learner would be able to pursue high interest strands of discussion. In the study, it was found that learners felt that incorporating social media would change the role of the teacher, and that is perhaps an explanation of why faculty did not like to use Twitter in the classroom. Remember, one of the themes of future-focused teaching and learning was changing roles for teachers' learners, and this is very much reflected in the theory of connectivism, where you have a network of learners. In another higher education study, Twitter was used to promote authentic discussion outside class, and it has the ability to be able to keep learners up to date with the latest information. Access to learning 24-7 was identified in this study by Janelle Wayne et al. And the reference can be found in the slide notes. In that same higher education study, Twitter was used to promote authentic discussion outside class and the ability to be able to keep learners up to date with the latest information was emphasised. Authentic audiences are well understood in literacy because they raise the bar of achievement. In New Zealand, Twitter has been used increasingly for professional development, but also in classes in a wide variety of ways, like Kids Chat NZ, a Twitter event which takes place for an hour each Wednesday, where a topic is discussed by learners from participating schools, 
It's also used for connecting with experts and finding authentic audiences for literacy, writing in particular. Barbara Lee Ash has researched and found the possible following possible uses of Twitter inside the classroom. There's a long list, which are in the notes of the slide, but I'll point out these ones to you. You can see Michelle Obama involved in the hashtag Bring Back Our Girls. So you can have a social cause and easily distribute it around the world with Twitter. You can use Twitter for flipping the classroom, so sending a link to your students under a certain hashtag, which is to videos or resources that they can study in their own time. I carried out a survey of education Twitter people. Some of the hashtags followed regularly in New Zealand are EdChatNZ, KidsChatNZ, LeaderChatNZ, SciChatNZ and MathChatNZ. These findings are from my survey on this graph. The reference spreadsheet in, this, in the notes of this slide give a list of New Zealand uh, Twitter people to follow and I'm going to bring that up so that you can have a look. There are a heck of a lot listed under primary teachers, secondary teachers, principals and so on. So if you're interested in joining Twitter you can actually follow any one of these um, people and you can be sure to find an interesting feed. Twitter can be used by academics. A Tibetan anthropologist Carol McGranahan noticed that there are numerous benefits to using Twitter. These include having access to a multitude of resources, seeking advice, communicating with experts, conducting research, reviewing publications, connecting with colleagues from around the globe, using media and attending conferences. She says that Twitter also enables the academic to be on the cutting edge, access good sources of breaking news, and have information before it finds a place on Facebook or an email. Using Twitter for teaching and learning, Wetzel in 2009 said, the use of Twitter for improving student learning also requires movement just beyond collaborating with other teachers, pedagogical self-reflection and professional development activities. It is essential to involve students in social network activities focused on research, data gathering, communicating with experts, examining other points of view and dialogue within all curriculum areas using online resources. Other possibilities are you can make a private group to tweet to. This has been used within school community as shown in these two examples, within a class or within a staff group. In my survey on teachers' perceptions, I asked my education colleagues what influences Twitter had on their teaching, and zero was a negative influence, and ten was extremely positive, so five would be no influence. And you can see that by far they believed that Twitter had a positive influence on their teaching and learning. In that same survey, I've taken some highlights out. How has Twitter changed your teaching? Teacher reminds me of possibilities, lets me communicate globally. There's a lot of different examples there. Collaborating, I'm more open to ideas, it broadens my perspectives. It gives me a professional learning network, a challenge, a provocation, resources and research to support any teaching inquiry and connection with an authentic audience. I also asked how has Twitter changed student learning? The responses ranged, I've put the link to the responses in the notes. We'll have a quick look at these as well. Uh, students use skills for reading and writing in tweets. Um, there was perseverance and confidence. An authentic audience had a very positive effect. Extension of language tasks. And my practice impacted positively on learners. Access to experts, global connections. One of the things that has been asked of me is how to deal with the Twitter feed. With Twitter you have to learn to manage your feed, otherwise you will suffer from information overload. In fact, Clay Shirky says there's no such thing as information overload, it is more of a filter failure. And the hashtags help overcome this problem to quite a big extent. 
I want to show you how you can also organize your feed using TweetDeck. So if you do get into Twitter, TweetDeck is a really helpful tool to use. You can see that there are a number of columns in a TweetDeck. I've got a lot of different ones. I can follow certain people, uh, a certain group like Connected Rotorua. Um, and if I go back to the first one, this is my home column where all of the tweets that I have followed come in. This one is the hashtag of you learn 16 so any of the tweets that have been um, put out there with you learn 16 come out and I can click on any one of the resources and look back over any one of those um, tweets to get to get information out of them. Notifications anytime that my name was mentioned it will come up in this column. This is another conference that I went to and so on. Here's a um, hashtag about GAFE Summit. So you can see a tweet deck will help you sift and sort, in other words filter. Back to that slide. Now I started the visual representation of Twitter data when I started the last part of this presentation. So let's have a look now at what it looks like. So this is recording tweets in real time across the world. You can see that in areas like the United States and South America and Europe where it is now night time the tweets are fairly going off so night time tends to be a good time to tweet. In New Zealand there's not much happening right now in the tweet world. As night time arrives however you will start to get a lot more tweets. At the moment the United States is winning with 1000 odd tweets it's been 3,700 tweets. You can see from that um, visual representation that Twitter is well and truly alive as a social medium and we would be remiss to avoid integrating it into our work in the classroom. And finally, Twitter can be used as a tool to build deep learning. It's a new tool for New Zealand teachers but it is gaining traction as a powerful tool limited only by the imagination of the user.